This is Richard Wolff from Democracy at Work with another Wolff Responds. I want to respond to a number of your questions about what we might expect from the new Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen. Well, uh, I'm torn in the sense that Compared to Steven Mnuchin, the current Secretary of the Treasury, she's clearly better in just about every consensus of what the word better might mean. So I won't comment on that. Where does she fall in the spectrum of right-wing, left-wing, reactionary, progressive, liberal, conservative? Where is she? Well, my best guess, uh, watching and listening to what she's had to say over recent years, uh, both as Fed chairwoman and so on in her various capacities, academic and public, I would say that she is the left wing of the narrow range that runs from the establishment of the Republican Party on the right to the establishment of the Democratic Party on the left. So she's somewhere between uh, the Obama-Clinton uh, kind of democracy, democratic politics, uh, somewhat to the left, not far, but a bit more. Kind of the way you might expect uh, an academic liberal Democrat to be a little bit more leftist, if I can say so, than the practicing politician type who's had whatever little leftism they once had basically punched out of them, like the Clintons, like Obama, and so on. But if you want to understand the full range that she does not occupy, let me give you a brief idea. Over the last century, the most progressive Democrats were those associated with Franklin Roosevelt and the Great Depression, the 1930s into the 1940s, or at least the first half of the 1940s. If you go back and you read, for example, toward the end of Roosevelt's presidency and the end of his, toward the end of his life, he put forward something he called the Economic Bill of Rights. That's a progressive program for a democratic politician. Janet Yellen doesn't have those perspectives. Nothing like the Economic Bill of Rights ever came out of her mouth or from her pen uh, at all. Uh, to give you an idea of how far she is from the radical points of view that Roosevelt allowed himself in the depths of the depression he was living through, how far is Janet Yellen from that? Well, best way I can summarize it is to tell you about a speech she gave in London, England. I believe it was June of 2017. So early in President Trump's uh, administration. She told the gathering of bankers and academics in a prestigious hotel in London that she didn't think that there would be any more financial crashes in capitalism in her lifetime. I'm letting that sink in. And it's not because we're living through what she didn't think she would see. That kind of mistake many of us make. It's not that. It's the capacity to think like that. To be so unconnected to the history of capitalism so that you either forget or you never knew that wherever capitalism has existed, as it spread from England in the 17th century to the Western Europe to the rest of the world, wherever it spread. It had an economic downturn, a crash, 
with financial implications and important financial dimensions, on average, every four to seven years. Wow. It's as if she hadn't noticed that we had a crash in this country in the year 2000. And then seven years later, in the year 2008, as if she couldn't imagine that maybe, you know, in the year 2020, there might be another one, you know, like the one we're living through, which isn't just another economic crash. It's the worst one in a century. And it is happening at the same time that we have the worst viral pandemic in a century. Kind of the worst nightmare you could imagine. But luckily, she didn't imagine it and assured us we wouldn't have these sorts of financial crashes again during her lifetime. And why? Because we had perfected the tools with which to deal with them. You know, that's exactly what we were promised after the Great Depression in the 1930s, that modern monetary and fiscal policies would do more than we needed to put the instability of capitalism expressed in its crises behind us. Well, it didn't work out that way, not even close. But it didn't bother her. She could say a thing like that. Well, is she at least progressive? No, you can't even give her that. Why not? Because other people have now defined progressive in a way she's not. Bernie Sanders, she's not. AOC, she's not. So progressive is now captured by the likes of Bernie Sanders and Alexandria ocasio so where is she? Uh, she's a left liberal academic economist, sort of in the mold of Kennedy, Johnson, people like that. Expecting a big breakthrough in her leadership? Don't. Expecting a radical departure from what has been the establishment norm? Don't. You'll just be disappointed by her and by your own judgment. Janet Yellen and I were classmates at Yale University, getting our PhDs in economics at around the same time. I had the same teachers she did. I went through the same curriculum she did. There was no radicalism in it. There was no criticism of capitalism that ever wafted through a classroom. No one ever assigned me one word of Karl Marx, and they didn't assign it to her either. If you were going to get even a little bit of a critical understanding of capitalism, you would have had to do it on your own, as some of us students did. She didn't. And I've never heard or seen of her trying to break out of the narrow ideological framework that was our program of study at Yale. So I think the notion that she is very different is about as reasonable as imagining that Joseph Biden will be very different from the other establishment Democrats he has so faithfully served and copied all of his political life. This is Richard Wolff for democracy at work.